we welcome the night. Tonight, as always, is my co-host Ian. Ian, are you there? I am. How are you this week, sir? Very tired. <laughs> yeah, it was, it's been a long day on my end, but we're here. We're here to close out this interesting marathon that we've uh, had to endure for a month. Uh, our Color Goria <laughs> marathon is coming to an end, and we got one final clown to discuss. Um, but before that. Um, usually we talk about new films, and one came out this past week, and that was Antebellum, and I would get into a big review of the film and talk about it, but, um, it's one of those films that you can't really review without going into spoilers. Um, I'll yeah. just say this, it, it's an okay movie, it's nothing great, um, it, it does play up on the whole, uh, race, you know, Racial tension, stuff like that. Um, it, it's trying to be, you know, something. You know, it's trying to be, you know, one of those standout films like uh, Get Out. Of course, um, the whole last act is very similar to Get Out, um, where it has you know a person going, getting you know taking care of stuff um, in a, in a setting. Um, there's there's a scene that you see in the trailer with the the ghost girl, uh, the creepy girl in white. That has no correlation to the movie whatsoever. It's just in there. Um, and then, you know, as a film, it's, like I said, it's okay. Um, but I found out, I pretty much figured out what the movie was 10 minutes into the film. And I was just waiting for the film to play catch up for the remainder of the movie until the reveal happened. And uh, that's that's kind of not good filmmaking <laughs> when, when it, it yeah. kind of gives away that early. Um but it it's fine. It's it's nothing I would you know I would put in there for like I mean it does do some pretty heavy themes when it comes to like um you know slaves and you know plantation stuff. Um but it's nothing, you know, you know it's no roots or anything, but it's it's you know it tries to be something and it has, you know, a, a decent protagonist, okay protagonist, but again, it's nothing it's nothing grand and um uh, do I hate that it didn't make theaters? Yeah, I mean, I'd still want to see it in the theater. Um, yeah, it could have been one of those movies where like people got a, you know like were rooting behind the character, you know, once the reveal happened. Um, but yeah, I mean, because it has some you know moments that make you you know like a certain the you know if it was packed full of theater you know goers and patrons and they were into the film you know they would do the whole like yeah woo you know clapping when something you know heroic happened for the character um but yeah there's there's they have some problems and especially that elevator scene with the creepy girl that has nothing to do with anything after even after the reveal it's there's no reason for it there's none um so yeah i mean do i recommend it not really (laughs) Honestly, it's it's one. Of, it wouldn't probably make my top five, even though 
it probably will make my top five because there's nothing really else coming out this year, so it's a sad state of affairs. Um, but, yeah, probably not. Nothing I'd really rush out to watch anytime soon. Um, Ian, any thoughts on that before we get into our uh, main central focus tonight? Yeah. Because um, I know you well, have words. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, no, fine. Um, no, I was kind of on the fence about that movie because it, it was one of those that, you know, people were blowing up and it felt like it was going to be, they're going to try a little too hard with it. Like, I felt like they were going to try to, you know, try to be the next get out. Um, but I still want to see it. Uh, and I definitely need to check it out. I actually, uh, you know, with all the shit that's been going on, because, uh, you know, I live in Louisville, so mm-hmm. there's all kinds of crazy yeah. shit going on right now. So, yeah. Especially with uh, yeah, that kind I'm, of... I've been hearing that. So, yeah, I mean, we'll be, I'm, yeah. I've not been keeping up, but I know I know some of the things that gets posted here and there. I'm like, okay, yeah, it's, it's not good there. I'll just say that much. No. Um, again, it's the whole. It's but nationwide. I that whole story, the anyway. Movie. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of forgot but, yeah, about the movie I mean, coming I'll, out. I'll, I'll, yeah, but I would say I would say it would remind me of another movie, but I would give away the movie, um, and what the main what happens. <laughs> so I can't really say that. Yeah. Um. So it, it sucks. I can't like say it's similar to this. I mean, it it does have a little bit of get out in there, just mainly the finale of get out with the person getting, getting back at the captors. Um, but I can't say anything else. I'll just say that, you know, I'm, I'm giving a, a little bit away saying the ghost girl doesn't come and, you know, it doesn't have anything to do, but, um, yeah, I can't, I can't say it, um, without giving spoilers. And since it's new, I don't want to do too much. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's, we always get the new stuff out of the way and we, have to talk about it because it is a new film that was supposed to be in theaters and have been a longer review, but uh, that's not our main focus tonight. And uh, because we got to finish up this marathon as we continue on our color glory marathon with a film called Crepitus. Uh, Crepitus was based off a short film by the same director, um, and he decided to make it into a feature. And <sighs> Jesus, okay, so here's the thing. I don't think it's as bad as Clown. I think it's a little bit of a step up uh, from last week. Um, I think the story of the film um, kind of makes it bearable because it's a very mean sort of spirited movie um, because of what happens with the, the two sisters. Um, and so I think in that regard, it's better than a it's, it's kind of better, but in a way it's still not because it has a lot of issues, but we'll get into that. So that's, that's my first words on what to expect with this one. So Crepitus um, is about two sisters. Uh, one is Sam and the other is Ellie. Ellie is the oldest. Sam is younger. Uh, they live in this house with their mother, and their mother is an abusive alcoholic. To them, um, she's always drunk. She's very abusive. She talks down to them, and they're just stuck in this house. Um, basically, uh, they don't get fed. Mother takes all the food. She sleeps all night. You know, hangovers, and they're just they can't even make noise upstairs because it's like a big house. They can't make noise upstairs without her getting angry. They can't go to the bathroom without her getting angry. They can't go to the attic without her getting angry. Um, she's just, you know, in a way she's a bitch. But, like, halfway through the movie, she becomes, like, my favorite character <laughs> for some reason. Like, it started out like, okay, she's mean. But then she has one-liners that just, like, I like her. And then, of course, Ian, he'll get into that. Um, but, yeah, um, it's just like she had one-liners, and I was, like, really engaged with, like, what is she going to do next, you know? So it's weird that she, she was, like, the most hated person almost in the film, and then she becomes, like, the the one thing that stood out, besides Bill Mosley as uh, Crepitus, uh, as the, the clown. Um, he really gave a good, solid performance, but I have to get into the whole story, and that, that's, that's 
that's where this whole film gets a little convoluted. So the mother is, again, alcoholic, abusive, stays out, days, comes back. Um, and then the, the girls, they go to the attic because they're, this house that they live in is their grandfather's. And apparently, again, something happened to their father, which caused her, maybe caused the mother to go this way, but then it gets a little bit revealed later on in the film that it's kind of been that way forever, I guess. I don't know. Um, uh, we'll get into that when we discuss more uh, plot-wise. But um, So they go upstairs because Sam wants to know more about her dad, and they go upstairs to the attic where he they look through all kinds of boxes and find things. They find a, a GoPro, and she starts using the uh, Sam starts using the GoPro on her head and starts filming stuff because they saw a, a ghost girl in the bathroom in the bathtub that has really no correlation, sort of like the ghost girl in fucking uh, Antebellum. It's just like they they use that to set up something later on that has really kind of no payoff. Um, so she uses the the GoPro because she wants to capture the ghost girl again, um, and then that's. The go whole GoPro situation is fucking stupid, uh, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Um, so they do that, and then they find this uh, sort of like medallion pendant thing, um, and she starts wearing that. And then we get into like this thing where uh, the the Bill Mosley's character again, Crepitus, he's I'm still not exactly sure what he is. Um, at first, I thought he was the grandpa, and then later on, like they say, it's the dad. But then, like, it's not, and then, so, but, like, he has this past with the family where there's there's some incest, and, like, there's this lineage of this thing that's happening with Crepitus, and it's generation and generation. They're, they have X's on their forehead because they're marked. Every single female in the family does for some reason. I guess it's a birthmark because, again, they're being marked for what happens later on in the film. Um, and then there's this cop that uh, because Ellie's trying to go get help or find food or something, um, and then, like, he becomes, like, an asshole because he fucks the mother. Um, and then, like, there's a scene later on that doesn't make any sense when we get into that. Um, so basically for the whole movie, it's just the abusive alcoholic mother yelling and degrading her children, uh, Ellie and Sam, uh in a very abusive manner, and they're just stuck there having small dialogue. That the dialogue is not the greatest in this film. It's very minimalistic to what's actually supposed to be happening in the film. It's just it's very not yeah. correct writing. It's just the writing was off. I'll just say that much dialogue wise because it was it was very bad um, to how the film was being portrayed. Um, because like they make up food and then they eat, you know, like they like they don't have any food. They hardly eat, and then they sit down, and, you know, have some kind of you know jam and dinner or whatever whatever they could find, and they they talk about something like, oh, I'm not hungry. Like you've been you're starved to death. Eat fucking food, <laughs> you know? It's just like stupid. I mean, like your mother is eating all the stew or whatever you made, and you not even have food because you talked about something weird. Like oh, I'm not hungry now. Um, but yeah, and then we so. We get Bill Mosley, like I said, he's like the standout. He gives a pretty solid performance because he's like the, again, the big name in the film. And he does solid uh, doing the whole uh, rhymes uh, being told back and forth um, until the, again, until we get to the, the last act. Um, this movie, again, like I said, it, it's it's mean-spirited and... You know, I, I give it props for that because, you know, you don't really have a film that sort of mean-spirited to, you know, characters in a while. Um, you know, it's very few and far between. Um, like I said, one that stands out to me is, of course, I always talk about is Family Demons, um, the Australian film. It's very similar to that in tone, um, except for that one's a little bit better um, in what it's trying to achieve. Uh, this one is sort of, I mean, it has a general idea. And I do appreciate it for the nature and the tone, um, but the the writing is just awful. The dialogue's bad. There's a lot of audio problems, and again, it's a low a budget, so audio problems is going to happen. But 
um, that's a very major issue with this one, where like some of the conversations being had towards the final act, um, you could hardly understand what was being said. Like when Crepitus was uh, talking about like the past and being chosen, like I can't understand you, and I had the volume all the way up. Um, and there's like an echo, um, a lot of echoing too. Um, like I said, it's yeah. not a bad movie, um, but it kind of loses. The finale, the final act, is just where it kind of lost me. Um, Because I knew I got a general idea. I mean, it's not as bad as last, you know, with Clown last week. All right. It's not that bad. uh, Where it just completely stops, you know, and nothing's really, you know, achieved. Uh, This one is like, it's it's kind of a, (laughs) kind of wretched climax early. And then, like, you're like, you know, just like, by surprise, you know, it's like premature ejaculation. Like you're getting ready into the, you know, the heat heat of the moment. And then you spurt everywhere, and then like you're left reeling, like trying to figure out, like I didn't mean for that to happen. You know, it's my first time. You know, it's one of those ordeals. Whereas like this one's like it, it knew what it wanted to do, but then it just like just sprayed everywhere, and just like oh shit, what are we gonna do? And it kind of just like doesn't know. And then, like, there's all these things yeah. that happen at the end. They're just like, what is this? What's going on? And, like, I mean, I know what I was trying to do. I get it. But, like, it does, still doesn't add up. And, like, there's some scenes. I'll let you talk here in a second, Ian. But there's a scene where, yeah. of course, uh, Sam Sam is hiding behind the couch, and her mother comes in, and she's hiding behind the couch, and her mother drinks, and she passes out. And then she tosses, you know, because she's stuck behind the couch, and she doesn't want to make noise to wake her mother up. So she tosses a can to before making walking away and then the mother gets up and she walks through the back door of the this room and you've already been into the the top part of the house upstairs and there's no other entry point besides the stairs that's like right there beside the front door and next thing you know because the Sam's leaving and then the mother comes downstairs and like where did you come from because there's no other doorway up there. There's an attic, and then there's the middle, you know, the upstairs, and then like there's no other door to where the upstairs could lead because he never. It's just a flat wall back there when they pull the yeah. attic stairs down. So like, where do you come from? I mean, that's one of the things. And then of course, Crepus comes down later, and it's like, and then there's like character choices that come out of nowhere towards the end, and it's just like. Like I said, it just like it just ejaculated everywhere and didn't know what to do after the mess. So like, okay, here you go. I mean, I hate to say that, but it's it kind of rings true with the last act of this film. But Ian, I'll let you get into it, discuss whatever you want to talk about, and then we'll get back and forth. All right. Well, I mean, the the audio problem became so annoying that I actually turned the subtitles on, which were great. Uh, you always got to love those. Like when it tells you what kind of music is playing, and it said spooky, humming, ambience music. I was like, I was just laughing at that. That actually helped me understand what was being said throughout the whole thing. And yeah, the movie was really confusing because I think they didn't really know what they wanted to do with with Creptus. Because I guess like it didn't really get into much of like how he became. That and I felt like that was a problem. Like if we would have got at least like you know a five minute like how he came to be about. Uh, I feel like that would have. Yeah, I mean, me it looked through the, she uh, Sam looked through a book and read a passage, and there's like this family tree thing and pictures, but like again, that doesn't really help with what Trepidus is. And we I think we've said that pretty much except for clown. Um, but like each clown, there's been some kind of problem with like backstory or something, and just like they're not exactly sure what they want to do with it. It's like this one is there. I mean, he's a cannibal sort of clown that has to eat to continue on being alive. And like, yeah, I understand that. But like, there's 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 also this incestuous angle to use, and I'm st- like again, I'm still unsure. You know what exactly if he's like reincarnated because he has to bite the person to become another person to you know continue on and there's just like again a lot of things that just like with 
the clown in general, just like, especially the ending, is just like that doesn't add up. But I'm sorry, I, I butted yeah. in there again. But I'm just oh, you're making fine. a point. No, uh, yeah. Like, I, my understanding was like they he had a pendant, and like it was made for father and child. One child, he he actually said, you know, one child he has to eat, and one he has to, you know, sleep with. So mm-hmm. I'm guessing, and they even said, like, I guess Grandpa has the same name as our father. So I'm guessing, like, what they assumed was their grandfather was actually their father because he's super old. So it's like, I guess it's like he has one child that he eats and one child he sleeps with. And I guess if he had two boys, then I guess they brought a girl for the child. I don't know. Like, I was very confused by the whole, like, uh, what he has to do to live. Because that was kind of weird. But Yeah, it kind of gets tossed out the window at the end, too. Like, well, you know, because he's like, oh, i got to do this before this certain time, you know, because it's Sam's birthday. So you have to do it on a birthday. Of the, the youngest one, and she's like years. eight or nine, yeah, or ten, yeah. And then, like again, that happened, and like then, then that happened. you know, like the first thing happened, then the second thing happened. Again, I'm talking in riddles, but Ian knows what I'm talking about. And then it's just like, yeah. oh, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like, what was the whole point of even? What, what was the whole point of the whole thing? Yeah, and my thing is, I was sitting there thinking, I was like, if he has to do this every 10 years to survive, like, he has to do this every 10 years, what, ha- like, did he eat a child, like, right before Sam was born? Because, you know, their daughter, his first daughter was much older, so did he do it, like, when she was like a baby, still a baby, I was very confused by that because it didn't really say. Because it's like, okay, so you waited ten years for after she was born to, you know, till she was done, and then what? Like you have to, like what happened before that? Just eating. I guess he was eating children to kind of sustain himself, but I guess he. He had to. Yeah, because I assume that. His... Yeah, I'm trying I, to figure I was out who confused. Jason was. Because that little kid, you know, they show that one scene with the kid on the table named Jason, which just, again, it's one of those things just like, okay. Um, and then they had the whole film. Like, we talked about this last week with the home movies with the clown. And it's like edited back and forth. Like, this is supposed to be a home movie. Like, this one makes sense because it's like on a film reel. Um, so it's like made as a movie. <laughs> so, yeah. But again, that like the whole thing with the ice cream truck, just and then the, I don't know. The, the whole last act was just like I said. It just it gets a little bit it's all messy. over the place. Yeah. Like again, I was into it. I you know I I, did, I don't really hate the movie. I mean, like I said, it goes some places you don't see that often, and it's very mean. And it's just that last act just kind of just lost itself. And didn't know exactly what it wanted to do, and like it, yeah, it was just... it's so weird how that managed to do that. Because I was into it, you know, I was like saying, okay, what's what's this going to be like with the crap of this clown? And then you know, you're you know, Bill Mosley's doing his all, um, and then you know, the mom's being mean, like all the characters are mean towards kids, every single one of them, and even even the yeah. oldest daughter starts to become mean towards the little sister towards the end there. So it's like everyone you know, pile on the little girl. Um, and then it's like, again, that last act just like happens like, Oh, uh, what? <laughs> and it's just like, that's kind of, it, it endears it a little bit where it's just like, Oh God. But it yeah, on, I thought it was, you know, like it would have made, I think what would have made more sense was if they were twins. I feel like that would have made a hell of a lot more sense if they were twins than an older. Because that's like my only problem. Was like, I guess, I mean, Jason is said in the video from father to child. So I'm guessing Jason was 
his child and maybe, he ate him. You think maybe he was like a stepson? If that's how they do it? Like, because I don't know who Jason, again, they never really say anything about Jason except for, I don't know. But maybe, I don't know. It, again, I'm, I'm grasping at straws. I'm just saying whatever. <laughs> just trying well, to make yeah. that, the whole thing uh, make sense. That's the only thing I was when he uh, when he was he had Jason tied up and he was eating him. He because he said that pendant was made for uh, father to child, so he can break the chain, uh, uh, break the curse that is death. So he has to break he his curse is death, and he has to break it by eating. The, drinking the blood of his child, and that's what keeps him young. Mm-hmm. But he eats other children and people, so it's nour- He says it's nourishing, but it doesn't satisfy him. So, and like in his little rhyme, he says if he's one day late, but if like they literally just stopped him for like two minutes and. He dies, and I was like, "Okay, that's." And the ending with, uh, the, I'm you know I don't really care about spoilers right now. No, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. It's like it doesn't make sense, and it makes even less sense when you explain it because it's like he just turns to dust. He, he doesn't make the deadline because it goes past the the moon goes past the apparently the hole that they have in the house. Somewhere, I guess I don't know why where that hole is. Um, but they got remember. this big, elaborate, freaking cavern of a basement that has a big, giant hole in it. Um, and so he has to eat Sam on her tenth birthday, and he he has to do it at a certain time, and it doesn't happen. And then he basically, again, spoilers, he 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 disappears. He he just like sort of ashes away, right? And then. The big reveal is that it didn't matter because Sam now, the little sister, is reincarnated. And then now Sam is crepitous, but also the policeman that was – where's all these pol- – that's another thing because he's like, oh, I'll be outside. I'm going to you know do my thing in here, right? And then the next thing you know, she throws him down in the basement. But there's, there's the people the, – the cops are still outside. They should still have been outside during that time. Like, oh, he's not come out yet. I wonder what happened. You know, like that that, that was another continuity error. Like, that doesn't make sense. Why, why aren't the cops coming in? He's gone. He's been missing for who knows how long. And that's the last time they've seen him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway, it's like, um, yeah. go ahead. I was just saying, yeah, that. I was thinking that too, like just if you're I was like, because when they went, when those two cops went downstairs and it was like, we need to call this in because they found their buddy's badge, and I was like missing, and you didn't think to look at the last place he was at, really? Like that's stupid. <laughs> yeah, but um, I don't. I go on talking about this finale here. So Sam is reincarnated. Some I don't know got somehow crepitus inside of her again, right? So now she is crepitus, and then the cop from earlier, that again, was banging the mom. Uh, he's down in the basement now, and now he is like the one that's supposed to impregnate the older sister now? Is that what I was supposed to get at? Because like he, then I the think... finale, you know, the end credits, it showed him yeah. driving the ice cream truck. So he's, what, is this like let the right one in where he's supposed to take care of the little girl <laughs> um, and bring the children well, or something. She, she said, like, Sammy was like, our father was a god and now some, some, and then she put her hand on uh, her sister's belly and was like, uh, you have a boy inside you? And I was assuming that it was either I think Creptidus had already raped his daughter and Mm -hmm. put a baby inside of her before all of that happened. Because she was tied up for a while. So I'm assuming that's what happened. And he's just like uh, the rich. The feel I got from those people, from that 
cop was that he is like Renfield. Mm. And he's just yeah, like, that's what I was thinking. you know, the, yeah, the guardian. Yeah. That's what he kind of seemed like. Cause he was he like, just seemed like, so again, like all these character comes out of place because the mother wants to, to Sam, the little girl, Wants her to feed the crepitus, right? Because oh, Sam, you got a special surprise. And then the mother changes face, and then like attacks crepitus, so Sam can run. And then the older sister goes alongside crepitus to make the abuse stop from her mother. And then that's why he starts to attack Sam, and the mother is dead. Apparently, like the abuse has stopped. And then the whole soul exchange happened between Sam and crepitus, and then. The Sam is now mean to the older sister, and just like all these character changes in the last like two, you know, like six minutes of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. No, so I it's think so weird. Like, how, mm. I think ahead, the only man. reason why the mother uh, cha- wasn't, re- I don't think she changed. I think she like she just was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm dying anyway. I'm taking this son of a bitch with me. Because he's the one that put me in this situation. You mm-hmm. know? And I was like, that's the only thing I got from it, but it did seem to happen really fast. I just, I don't know, I think some parts of the movie went too quick, and then some parts were just kind of dragged out a little bit. I feel like it maybe yeah. if there was like five minutes of backstory, it would have made a lot more sense. And I, I think that was really all that was missing, was like, just a little bit of backstory to really yeah, make and it's the movie, like it's, you know, stand out. Yeah, it's not the most engrossing film either. I mean, it's a very – it's slow um, and mean. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. There's a lot mean. of child violence. And, um, oh, there's one one quote from the mother, um, Skanktard. That was my favorite quote. Wake up, Skanktard. <laughs> <I> was like, <laughs> that was what? my favorite thing. Yeah, like it's a new word, like skank tar. That was great. Her quips were wonderful. That's the reason I liked her best. <laughs> she was like the most vile person there is, being an abusive alcoholic, you know, person that doesn't care about her children. But um, she 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 became the antihero in the end of it. <laughs> like, fuck, man, I, I didn't want the mother to go. Fucking skank tar. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that... Like I said, it's not a bad movie. It's just like again, it's very slow. And as Ian said, you know, like it could have been, you know, if they fleshed out a few things in the script, um, it, it would have flowed a little better. Because that middle portion, like literally, I got made it like forty, thirty-five, forty minutes in, and I had to pause to go like do something else because I was just like, the movie just like was not in, entertaining. You know, it wasn't really keeping me engaged. Like, okay, I gotta go like get something to eat, I'll come back, just give me two minutes to just wrap my head, head around everything that's happened so far, and then I came back and finished it, but it's just like, it's it's a, it's not hard to get through, it's just like, again, it's just like, it's just not really engaging for a film about a cannibal incestuous clown, <laughs> you know, right. Um, and again, I liked, you know, Bill Mosley, you know, again, he, he stood out I like the look of him. You know, it's probably the more yeah. one of the more like old uh classic type clowns. Um the way that he looks. Oh, I he loved doesn't, it. you know, not yeah. Um old jester looking. Um very very um oh, what was his name from uh, American Horror Story? Twisty. Sort of like a yeah. toned down twisty from uh, American Horror Story. Um uh, and uh, you know, of course not not extravagant makeup but just it, it worked for what it was trying to achieve um in the clown department and again i like again i like the nature of the film and the story wasn't too bad it just kind of lost its way and, and as i you know my analogy earlier you know um it's just like it's it was doing good and then something happened caused it <laughs> to premature and then you're left to you know revel in what just happened and like it still doesn't really make sense. Like, ah, well, I'm sorry, you know. <laughs> you know, it's a it's a terrible analogy. I mean, me and my analogies, but it it does kind of ring true to this one. Um, but again, honestly, Ian, I guess we have time to do this because we usually do this. Out of the films, which one would you 
think would be the best one? We got oh. Clowntergeist, Eight Ball, Clown, Clown, Twenty Nineteen, and Crepitus. Because again, Clowntergeist, I had problems, and it's it's one of those that I probably will never remember. Um, well, I will remember it, but I it's not it. one that's going to be at the top of my head. Uh, Eight Ball Clown is an experience. Um, and that's probably yeah. going to be the one that I'll never fucking forget. Um, Clown was just, you know, it was popcorn, and it was, eh, and it had a lot of issues. Like, really, like, it wasn't as bad as 8-Ball Clown with the issues, because, again, 8-Ball Clown was directed by a child. Um, but Clown was just one of those, yeah. page, you know, sort of like cheap paycheck movies, you know, to put out on a shelf to cash in. Um I mean, I think Crepitus has, like, the most heart behind it because, like, there's a really deep story there, but it kind of yeah. falls flat in the end. Um, and it has, again, it has the technical issues. So it's it's a toss-up, honestly. If I'm going with it, I mean, it, it would be 8-Ball Clown. It's like Beaster Day, you know? Like, Beaster Day was, like, the one in that Easter Marathon is, like, the best one because it was so bad. Like, 8-Ball Clown is oh, almost God. that because it's so bad. But like, there's nothing really. It's just revel. It's just too bad. Eight Ball Clown. There's just like all that is just like, oh my god, you know. Um, but Crepitus probably would probably be the the top one because of like the the dark nature and tone. Yeah. Um, and that would like take precedent over Eight Ball and just like the absurdity of it. Um, what's what's your thoughts, Ian, on all, everything? Well, out of all the movies. Uh, I think this one was the better of them, uh, just because of the, you know, it kind of the clown. I like the way the clown looked. Um, while yes, it there was a lot of you know mean spirited child abuse. I felt like you know the sisters. I like the sisters bond, and then like. The kind of the story, um, it didn't, but at the same time, you know, it's kind of hard to <laughs> judge these movies because they're all mm-hmm. not great. <laughs> yeah. It's just they, like, they all have which a problem. one was the better and of the worst? It, like, you have, you have two yeah. children with, you know, you have four kids with birth defects. Which one's your favorite? Like, oh, God, I don't know. <laughs> you know. It's awful. I'm sorry. If, you know, I don't mean that in a mean-spirited way. I just, like, it's it's <laughs> it's like that, you know. Like, you know, it's like you love them, you know, you want to love them, and you, but they each have their own problems, you know. You just can't, Yeah. you know, it's, it's a lot for a parent, you know. And this is a radio show. We're considering ourselves parents to these films because we watched them and we took the time to review them. And uh, there, <laughs> there's a lot of issues. Uh, yeah, and you know, I feel like it had the least, it needed the least amount of tweak, other than like the yeah. rest of, God, 8-Ball was just, 8-Ball <laughs> was, I'm going to kill people now. who's afraid of clowns, because I'm also afraid of clowns, so <laughs> that's why I'm <laughs> killing all these guy. people. <laughs> yeah, that was Clowntry Guys. That was Clowntry Guys. Oh God! Oh yeah, Abel's the heroin clown. Yeah, I'm getting them yeah. all confused right now. Yeah. It's all kind of running together inside my head. Yeah, oh, clowns guys, and then you got Abel that was heroin. That was the, was the, the, the prank phone call. Clown. Yeah, yeah. They didn't know exactly totally what he was. Yeah. <laughs> oh my lord! You, once you think about that one, oh god, that one's so bad. But yeah, and of course, like clown, that's just again dime a dozen, just cash grab. Nothing really stands out, and just like so many continuity errors in that one, isn't it? Again, not yeah. ball worthy, but Jesus Christ. Um, and then the ending that just totally didn't happen. But this one, like I said, this one, it's at least coherent enough. I mean, clown was pretty paint by numbers. I mean, it was coherent, yeah. but it was just like that ending just like fucked everything up. Like it didn't even tie up loose ends. Um, this one, I mean, yeah, it's a little convoluted in what it was trying to showcase with uh, the finale and Crepitus. But like I said, there's there's definitely something there, and it's a much deeper story than the other three, besides an like, eight-year-old kid writing about a heroin-addicted clown. Um, 
<laughs> just, it's still, I, I still can't get over that. Um, uh, but either. again, I, I, it's still. I mean, Kraftis is probably the one that has more, you know, internally, as you know, for a person. Because again, it 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 feels like there's more to it in the film. Um, it just they didn't exactly know how to portray it in dialogue um, as greatly as they wanted to. And like I said, it needed a little bit of tweaking, but it is the one that has more to it. And like I said, as you said, Ian, um, just a few little tweaks here and there, and it's not one. It's not the worst. Like I said, it's it's top of the game for me because it, again, it's not mind-inducingly bad like the others. Um, and yeah, again, yeah. just a few minor tweaks. I mean, like being confused, I'm fine with. You know, like okay, you know, I can get it. You know, whatever. Um, when it's a film that has so many continuity errors and just bad filmmaking, like Eight Ball Clown and Clown in general, um, you know, it's like, oh God, I'd, I'd, I'd rather be confused than have my pull my hair out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'd rather be I'd rather be confused than just like shocked at like what I watched. You know, like I'd rather just like left, be left questioning stuff. Like, okay, okay, yeah, all right, than uh, whatever the fuck Eight Ball Clown was. Yeah, I don't think he knows what it was. <laughs> well, of course, this eight-year-old kid could make up his mind. <laughs> but uh, Ian, any final, <laughs> any final thoughts before we call this marathon yeah. done and uh, don't have to see another clown movie for another year? Well, we probably will see another clown movie. Who knows? But um, any final thoughts? Um, why the GoPro? That's literally all I. It, just, <laughs> it made no sense. She loved the GoPro so much. And and it was upstairs and it was downstairs and it's like it doesn't add anything. She's just like oh, it's a security blank for some reason, and like they yeah. never use it. They never even use it. And then the whole sister yells at her like, "Turn that off!" Like, how do you know it's on? It's a GoPro. <laughs> and like, yeah. you don't and need to that's... film. It's already recorded. And like, all right. Mm. Yeah, when the mother throws the little girl down the stairs, uh. It goes into this weird, like, you're seeing through the lens, and it keeps changing. Like, the effects keep changing, and it was bothering me so bad because I was like, mm-hmm. why? Why is this doing this? And that was my problem. And, and that in and why uh, that the hole girl? in the wall in the bathroom? And, like, it's locked. It's rusted shut, and then all of a sudden it just opened. They're like, oh, you need to crawl down here exactly. to save me. Like, oh, okay, whatever. They're just convenient. It's like <laughs> trap. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you know, and that, yeah, that was another thing. Like that girl, she said she saw the reel before. She's seen those reels before, and mm-hmm. she said that her, their dad, loved to make movies. That's why he had the GoPro. One, I would love to see him use that GoPro, <laughs> just <laughs> making rhymes and. Where like a clown wearing a GoPro murdering little children. It's like what the fuck? Yeah. Like yeah. so I'm like I was very confused because I was like, wait, 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 wait. You're telling me that Ellie knew her father was like this and who he was. Yeah. I was like, and she knew what was going on. Like, why didn't she when she ran away? Why didn't she try to take the sister with her and not run to it, it, apparently it, it, the shit hole? It just, it just, I don't know. It falls apart, man. There's no reason to question it. it. It's just like, it, it has, like I said, it needed to be tweaked a little bit more. And uh, but anyway, that is our color Gordon marathon. We could probably go on <laughs> about these films even longer, but we're gonna be starting up our Octo- October horror Halloween marathon next month. Uh, I got a couple films lined up for that, so I'm looking forward to that. So Ian, as always, it's great talking to you, and we will see everyone next week for our Halloween marathon. Oh, good man.